I was like, we've just blown the car up. <laughs> you know, we don't know how much oil's in this thing. So it's been about a month since the uh, the last video, and oh no, <laughs> we don't really have any excuses, do we? <laughs> we don't really have any excuses. We've been busy doing other things, you know, just working in the background, developing Omni Garage as a brand. We've got some quite some big things that we've ticked off over the last month. It's been pretty hard work for us because there is nothing really producible for you as a viewer to see anything. No. It's been frustrating too, right? You've been waiting for oil for this car for the True. last few weeks. You tried to figure out you needed a manual, you needed a particular torque wrench for this, and then the oil was the final piece, and it's taken probably three to four weeks to actually get sorted. And also the weather here has been pretty bad, so over the last couple of weeks, almost a month, it's been raining nearly every day, so we've really struggled to get motivated. So we're just gonna do an oil change on the Audi here, pretty basic. Nothing too exciting here, and we'll just work our way through it and um, have a bit of fun. Have, yeah, hang out. I'm, and I'm get, excited. It's been a long yeah. time since we've done an oil change, right? We're not doing enough Ks. So. Getting the old uh, band back together, right? Eh? Let's do it. So before I rocked up this morning, Glenn's got the, uh, the car all jacked up. And he's um, I might just let this run for a little bit, eh? Yeah, get the oil up to temp a little bit. Should be nice and simple. Or should we take the bottom of the? Should we take the bottom stuff off first? Yeah, before we get hot under there. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, actually, it might be quite nice to get hot under there. It's so cold, but <laughs> no, let's uh, <laughs> let's take the bottom off. Bit more clearance room too, which is nice under here. Do you reckon? Than no. Subi? No. No more clearance room. No more clearance. Okay. I reckon. Okay. I reckon it's probably about the same height off the ground. Okay. Because we are at the same. So the jack stands have been the same height the whole time. Yeah. When we do that car and this car, and I reckon it's about the same height. Oh. This car sits pretty low to the ground. Although you wouldn't think so being an SUV, right? No, that's what I thought. I thought just SUV. We're gonna have a bit more room to play with today, but. That's so right. for You're people who back. are wanting to watch this video for instructional purposes, this is a 2014 Audi SQ5. It's the V6 um, 3 litre and it's the fuel uh, petrol version, not diesel. So that's if you want to follow along and show you, learn how to do this, I guess. But underneath there's a skid plate underneath there which we need to take off to get access to the drain valve. So this is the ratchet wrench, 18 volt. And the skid plate underneath this car has got a T25 Torx bit, so you need a special little attachment to be able to get these off. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine along the front. This car's got like a little, I suppose a little spoiler or a little wing here on the bottom here, and there's five in there that need to come off to get that off. And then there's a couple of screws at the back, and then hopefully once I've done that, this should just pop off. I reckon get yourself one of these ratchet wrenches because they save you so much time. I don't even have to, you know. Do you know what I'm uh, actually enjoying looking at here? Yeah? More than you lying on the ground taking those bolts out. No, not your belly. What? This. How good does the Subi look? Mm. Hey, baby. <laughs> do you know my favourite thing on this as I walk down the street to come and, uh, come and do this video today? The seeing that new number plate on there. We got the OG WRX plate on there. That's the first time they've seen that too. That yeah, is. Hope you didn't want to uh, do a big reveal for that. You know, nah, don't need a big reveal. Look at that. That looks good. How are we going under here? Not too bad. So this is that little spoiler bit I was telling you about. So this won't come off until you take that off. Oh, as well. I gotcha, and then that will slide out. Hopefully, yeah. So you, you're going to help out today, or you just you nah, just? No, I'm just chilling. You just want to look cool today yeah well it's really cold so i've got the uh i do have the og shirt on under here but we're staying warm well I'm it not. must be like eight or nine degrees today it's freezing i usually have a long sleeve with this but uh, it's at the t-shirt shop yeah I'll, I'll stay toasty and you just you carry on down there okay ratchet wrench i tell you just stump up the money and go and get one yeah it saves your life yeah i wish i'd got one so long ago such an you could be out there with your, with your ratchet and you could go like this for hours, but it's so easy. Usually now I'd be like sweating, you know, puffed out because I'm fat boy and stuff, but oh, get your skis out one. Can I just ask you what's going on with this car? Hey, this is a Fuck, daily now. Is, look at this. It's been wet. <laughs> I want to know when these uh, rain guards are coming off too. When I've got the money to put it, spend on another detail. Why can't we just take them off? I'll you, rip them off right now. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you can do it if you want. What do you reckon? Just a little bit of, um... You're gonna leave a lot of muck underneath is the problem. Well, maybe right. I do it when I next wash. 
Yeah, like it's gonna leave glue, you're gonna need some Tarex or some Koch Kimi Ulex. If you give that a whirl. Baby steps, I reckon. Don't wait for the full detail. Because the other thing you need to do is remove the sticker off the back, man. I know you're quite emotionally attached to it. <laughs> Audi Japan sales. Got to come off. I'm not emotionally attached to it. Well, why is it so long? The detail. You're just saving it for a big project, so you feel like you're getting a lot done in the detail. Yeah. All right. This is why you get yourself a lift as well. Look at the, what is this? It's like got it's, padding on it. It does. It's a bit weird. And those are the little clips that held that, sword that allowed you to screw in that wing at the bottom. It's funny though, eh? this is quite a bit nicer than the uh, one that comes off the bottom of the SUV. But that's really odd, the padding. If someone knows what that padding is, let us know in the comments. And actually these have got little washers on there, so they actually stay in there. Oh yeah, okay, so that's handy. And those ones there, actually... Those are those clips that have come out. screwed out, yeah. So one, two, three on each side. What do you reckon? Yeah. Looks like an undercarriage. <laughs> undercarriage, <laughs> underbody. Engine, maybe? The engine. The engine ain't down here. Right. I'm going to warm the car. The car has been for a trip into town and back, but I'll just... Probably about an hour ago. Yeah, but I'll just warm it up again so that it helps that oil drain out. Here we go. So we'll give this about five minutes and we'll set up our oil, get our filter ready. Pretty much good to go from there. How nice would a jack be? I want to get. Well, not a jack. How nice would I got a, two uh, jacks. You got two, oh no, yeah. you got two jacks. And you can call thing? me Jack too if you like. Yeah, we can cool. have three oh, jacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lift would be so nice. And air conditioning. It doesn't have to be like a big flash, you know, um, was it two post, big, huge thing. But I think something like just quick jack. Mm. Slide it underneath the car, have your little module, and that would be enough just to get the car out a little bit higher than this. And oh, save so much time. It's probably a little bit safer, you know, not having to... How would you store them? How much room would they take? Could you like put them on you, the wall you can, over there? You can put them up on the wall there so that they're quite thin and then they just stow up like that. Yeah. And they've got like rollers. I think they're quite heavy. But um, how much higher? Oh, yeah, you've got quite a bit of clearance up there, don't you, to get it a bit you higher. You don't have to lift it all the way up, but just enough to get underneath. You know, you're not dropping an engine with a, with those. Well, how much higher are you going to get the car up with a quick jack? Do you, do you know what the clearance is? Well, you could go up as high as you want. Uh, I don't know, maybe about that high off the ground. Okay, so pretty comfy. You could, you won't be able to get the Viper chair under there. But no. enough to be more comfy oh, you're, than, you're Not than... high enough for you to sit underneath. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know, maybe there, maybe a little bit lower. Mm. But um, I think it would be good for detailing as well. You know, when we're detailing cars, you could just sit at this chair at this height and you can go, oh, I want to go up a little bit more or come down. Well, I think that's the key. I think when you're detailing, you want to spend as much time on that chair as you can, and you can't do that when you're working down here. But if you can bring the car up, then you can just adjust your seat height to get from here to here. I think that's what we, they're about, I don't know, three, four, five grand. Wow, okay. That's more than I thought. Yeah? Yeah. Because this car is, mm, I don't actually know, but it's around that sort of 3,000 kilo, sort of three ton area. And it maybe, will... maybe a little bit less actually. So you need to get the, the heavier one. Yeah, see, that's when I struggle to think about if you're going to drop three, four thousand dollars on quick jacks, you're halfway to a decent sizzler. But the problem is, is that we don't have any height no, anywhere for a sizzler. We don't. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. We don't have any height for a two post. No, 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 no way. But, but we, a sizzler lift, you'd be able to get the same clearance but a as you would a quick jack. Like it's going to be no grand. difference. And then yeah. you've got to, where, do you, where are you going to put that thing? Because yeah, if you're parking permanently on the ground, it's permanently it? on the ground, and then you've yeah. got to park and with it. And in a two car garage like this, yeah, I, can, I, I see the. If we had a shop, if there was a shop with oh, clearance, I absolutely. think you would just wait and you do the, absolutely. You do the other one. Absolutely. Line. Yeah. But in the meantime, I think that's probably a viable option. This thing, I tell you, buy yourself. Don't have to buy a Roby one. Saves you so much time and effort. Yeah, I like that tool. I think that's on my short list. I'm really happy I went with a vacuum when we bought our last tools, though. Actually, when we went shopping, we got some good gear that we use quite a lot. The vacuum and that thing. Indispensable. I tell you what, one of my batteries died the other day. So I'm really? down to one battery. 
just completely mm -hmm. toast. Like the, in, the inside of it's all burnt, I'll show you. Which one is it? You've got a warranty on that. Nah, it's expired. Is it? This What's battery there? was in 2018. I can't remember, it's only a couple of years on batteries, but like see how it's all burnt on the inside? Oh wow. That's a five amp as well. And on both sides it's just, yeah, completely dead. So before we drain out the oil, I'm just gonna undo the filter cap, or the oil filter cap. And this is where, oh, that's the oil cap, sorry, and this is our oil filter. So this oil filter here takes a 36 millimeter socket to get that on there. And I'm also gonna undo that. You need to buy that specially for this? Yeah, this is a special size. So 36 millimeters is actually a huge socket. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's quite expensive to buy that. You've okay. got to, it's just, I bought that as a single unit. It was like 20 or $30. Oh, wow, okay, but you've got that now. I've got that now, yeah. Now the reason why I'm undoing this is that it will create a little bit of a vacuum there so that as I undo that, it'll the, the vacuum will suck the oil out of this filter down below so then when I'm underneath and I drain the oil out, it should suck all that oil down. So then when I take this oil filter off and I flip it up, that hopefully I reduce the amount of oil that I'm going to drip all over this engine. That's the idea and that's the concept. Yeah, because this is the first time we've done an oil change where we've had the filter at the top rather than under underneath and we make yeah. quite a mess when we've taken that out traditionally on the ground so it's going to be interesting to see probably put some paper towels and bits down here you reckon as well yeah tidy that up but that's uh it's a final step isn't it do you know how nice it is it's toasty around here yeah you feeling yeah. warm yeah audi make good heaters radiant beautiful i don't want to undo it all the way okay so that's You've got to the that's to the point where that can come out now okay so we'll just let that sit there so underneath here is the, um, is the sump plug which we need to undo to drain the oil out. So I have just loosened it off with a longer um, with a longer wrench there just to give me a little bit more leverage. This is a six millimeter hex bit. And hopefully as I unscrew this, we should be able to drop oil all over ourselves. I love this bit. We've had some great moments under the car here like this, eh? Yeah, we're about to just have another great moment right now. Oh no. If you're at full commit, you need to take your watch off. Just as well that oil's not too hot. Everyone will be happy I've got gloves on this time. Yeah. This is not going well. This is why you get yourself in a few motor oil drain valve. Hang on, why are people going to be happy you've got gloves on when you gave me a hard time last time I wore gloves? You told me to harden up. Ooh, that was clean. I've got, new, I've got a new, I've got a new sump plug and crush washer. So, look at the pattern of the oil drain there. It's kind of wide fan, eh? So the oil um, amount in this car is roughly about six point eight liters. I'm not sure how big that is, so we might need to hurry up because I think we might have more oil coming out than we think. <laughs> okay. You spilt some oil too. You didn't have the uh, paper towels prepped. <laughs> We're about to overflow, man. Are we? Yeah, quick. <laughs> no, we're not. We're all good. <laughs> oh, so, I don't actually know the size of that, but I do have another one. So, uh, it's, it's, so relax. It's looking all right. We're all right. Okay, just mm -hmm. watch out, because you've got some oil here. In there. In there. Just as well. You just watch that. I'll give us a paper towel. Yeah, don't worry. I've got us under here, man. Uh, there's a rag somewhere. Should be. No, I think we're going to be right. The flow is slowing here. And we've still got plenty of, plenty of room. Yeah, one, one of these is sweet. We all good? We are all good, sir. That was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Uh, do you know what? There's been messier. Messier all changes in the history of Omni Garage. Pretty happy with that one, to be honest. Yeah? I wasn't running for paper towels and... Your that wind's a bit of a pain, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we'll just let that drip away for a bit. I'm just gonna tidy up around there. Getting out a new crash washer. The problem is the wind keeps blowing it all everywhere. So I'm just gonna keep that under there and put the new crash washer Yeah, yeah I think it's a good idea. Where's the crash washer? Um, well, the old one's in the bucket of oil. 
Yep, where it should be. So, if you've got this model of car, 2014 Audi SQ5, um, it's the V6 3 litre petrol, then this is the oil filter that you need, and I'm just trying to find a number. Actually, there's the number on the top there. Yep. And you want to make sure you get a new crush washer. I also got a new sump plug as well, and it's a pretty good little kit, comes with the seals that you need. And then in the bottom there is the new sump plug. Perfect. Man, this, this keeps leaking, eh? Yeah, you just have to commit. We got a torque spec on that as well? Um, there's great debate about a torque spec under here. Yeah. Some people say just tighten it up until um, you feel that you know the, the crush washer basically gets crushed against the pan there and so that it feel it do it up till it's tight. I think half the problem is I can't actually see what I'm doing. And then other people say it's roughly about 30 newton meters. So which side are you gonna settle on? The 30 newton meters or the? Hadn't thought about that. Okay. Oh my God. This is nuts. I mean, 30 newton meters is not a lot. Yeah, but also you don't want to damage the bottom of the pan. No, you don't. You don't want to over tighten this because you could damage the pan. You also don't want to over tighten it because you won't be able to get it off next time. But you also don't want to under tighten it because all the oil will fall out. I like the torque spec. You like the torque spec? Yeah, 30 sounds good. 30? Though you can probably get to 30 by hand tightening. So you could over tighten it. It means just tighten that up until what? Till you felt it was tight enough in there? I just did it until I felt like it was snug enough and I mean, we'll start the car up and we'll heat it up and if it leaks with oil then I'll tighten it up a bit more. more. Yep, yep, but I feel comfortable with that. I didn't do it to 30 newton meters, I just did it tight. There's actually nothing in there because that worked a treat sucking all that out. Great. I thought no, we were no, I don't want to clean that. Yeah, fair enough. Thought we were going to make a mess with that. That's yeah. great. You could take that in the house and <laughs> yeah, put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> You reckon? Uh, oh, yeah, probably not. Tell you what I've enjoyed today. Haven't actually used it, but seeing super degreaser in action. I've never used degreaser before. Never used to get my hands dirty enough, you know? What's the trick of getting this off? Wiggle. Yeah, it sits in like a little cone thing, I think. Okay. Easy. Now you just have to be a little careful because in the inside there is a little gasket or a little rubber seal that mm -hmm. they came with the pack and there's another rubber seal that sits on the outside so I'll show you. We want to make sure we take them off and replace them so there's a little rubber seal on the outside here that we need to take off, hook it out and then there's another little one in there that we, oh bye bye. Oh. Oh. That we need a hook out there. Could have been close. It's like it's embedded in the inside of that first ring there. So yeah. I do have a little hook tool. Here we go. So ah, oh, I see what you mean. Gotcha. Like a little rubber seal. So we need to make sure that we replace that one. And then same again in the inside here somewhere. Another rubber seal. Here we go. Coming out. And it's the biggest seal yeah, of the yeah, two. Yeah. So you can see how that tab was so pointing tab up. You want to re you know, coat some nice oil on there or some fresh oil, or you might get enough from in there and plonk that back in. And same with that other little seal I took out. Clean just giving me a hard time because <laughs> the uh, seal broke on there. That's not my fault. That's motor, man. You had one job. One job. Yeah, and I did the job. Look, you got your spout out. Dip your finger in there, mate. Go to town. <laughs> Oh, one job, eh? Yeah, I've done my job, okay? Great assistant. I'm just giving this a bit of a clean up. It's pretty dirty around the, around the outside, eh? This engine bay's pretty dirty. Full stop. Yeah, it's not good, is it? Well, you haven't done an engine bay clean at all on here, have you? Nah. Just maybe just a wipe? No, probably not even a wipe down. Not even a wipe down. Came off the truck. Came off you the truck. You just put it to daily use. As is. All right, so you got your kit here, have all your O-rings. You're going to lube them up. Yeah, so I've just dipped my finger in a little bit of fresh oil. I don't know if you need to lube this one up specifically, but this is the little thin one that goes around here. Probably won't be able to get in there as well, but that's just sitting around the outside. 
And then so the oil that we're using today is the Motul 8100 XS 5W40 and this is what we use in the WRX, we've used it in the STI in the past. I didn't actually know that we're using that same oil today. What's well, the factory spec on this for oil? So it depends, it depends on your service intervals of your vehicle. So if you're doing um, service intervals based on kilometers, they give you a different spec of oil than if you're doing it based on, I think it's time dependent. So I'm, okay. I'm doing this based on um, how many Ks I do. And so the spec for that oil, it comes in the manual as well, is, um, is VW 500, oh five, <laughs> yeah, VW. Try again. <laughs> so the spec for this oil is VW50200- You can read that. 50500. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is the spec for the oil that is um, in this vehicle that's getting changed. I think it's like 14,000 Ks as a service intervals. So we're halfway on our service interval. Okay. And so time dependent and that's what I'm chosen, chosen to do because that's what's in the spec of the book. Okay. So as long as you've got that VW spec number, then you can use the oil. So we've got that O-ring sitting on there. Yep. Comfortable with that? Comfortable with that. And cool. now I'm gonna do the same insert for the filter. Where's that filter? You're taking that out? Probably by just inserting that into that little canister there is probably gonna give it enough oil, but yeah, and you're just gonna tab up. Tab up in the inside there and you could just pry it down there with your finger. Right now we're ready to insert that filter. So there's like little teeth in the inside there that um, you want to make sure you kind of plug it in there so that this filter doesn't come out. I don't actually know how you... There we go. And now we can just screw that back on. Now there wasn't a torque spec for this was he? No there, there was is. Just a, there is a torque spec for the this. The torque spec is on the nut here so it's 25 0.5 newton meters. Okay. We'll thread this on by hand so that we know that we're getting, we're not crossing the threads. And then we will grab, we'll grab our torque wrench at 25.5 newton meters with our 36 millimeter um, that big boy, the big boy on there, and torque it down. Man. There we are, we're all torqued up. 25.5 newton meters. So here in New Zealand at least we can get the, uh, the 8100 XS in 5 litre and 1 litre bottles. So we've got 7 litres total here, we're pretty much going to use this whole amount. And then what, you'll save that 200 mil just for regular checkups to make sure that you've got some in case you need to top up at all? Yeah. This shouldn't be eating oil, but 200 uh, mil nice It to... consumes a little bit of oil, but um, it's not too bad. Which one should I use, man? What are you, what are you feeling like? Like what, which funnel? Yeah. Ah, oh, that one. Right? Not, what, the not, little one? Not the little one? No, the big one, definitely. No, the big one's got a filter on it, it doesn't work very well. Okay, little one. I mean, that's a pretty big spout to aim into there. Nice. Nice one. So he's dumped five litres. Do you enjoy this bit? It takes forever, eh? It does. Why don't they make oil bottles that have got like a big long spout on it that like bendy and then you can just pull it? You don't have to buy like five dollars worth of these motor ones are good though, like I feel like this is... At least it got a bit of a spout, yeah. like, you know. Because if you're trying to pull this with no spout on there, oh, it's a nightmare. But yeah, why don't they just keep continuing up that little plastic but that actually pulls out of the inside mm -hmm. of the bottle? Makes sense, doesn't it? Sure does. See that catch up. There we go. You can buy, I've been on um, FCP Euro's website, which is like a an American company that does a lot of European cars. Yeah. They actually have a proper um, oil funnel, I suppose, that actually you can screw into the cap there and it's got like a big tube on it so you can stand way back here and fill it up. Uh, okay. So it's, I think something is what I want to look into getting is actually something that's, you know, custom for the car. It'd be quite nice. I mean, this is doable by yourself. It's definitely nicer to have two sets of hands here, right? Because especially this five litre is quite heavy to try and balance on an angle. Yeah. All right. There we are, five litres of oil so far. That's five done. Let's dump another. 
what do you reckon? Should we put on about five and we'll put six? Let's go six and a half layers. Six and, and a half, and then we'll just kind of work out from there. Yeah. So it's telling us we're at max. We put one liter short in, but the engine's going to be warm to give us a uh, proper. So I start and see what happens. Well, yeah, we, we know we're at least 800 mil short, but according to this, we're good to go. So we need to let it warm up. Yeah, supposedly. And then check the reading. Yeah. All right. And then put 800 mil more in, like we know we need to. All right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Quite frustrating that there's no traditional dipstick. You can do in a tr traditional dipstick where you can do like a modification, so you can. Yeah. I mean, the electronic dipstick, like, yeah, I don't know. I wish it was, you'd fill it up and you could see it rising up, but yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, it'd be best of both worlds, would be nice, right? So we're going to take this for a drive now, get it up to temp, and then we can do a proper reading, top it up as necessary. Holy. So we just pulled out of the road and coming along the highway, not driving fast at all, just getting up to temp. And there's, and I, I, thought, like, I thought the engine had dropped its car. I was like, we've just blown the car up. <laughs> you know, we don't know how much it was in this thing. Oh. oh, have you checked? So I know what's happened under there. You don't know what's happened under there. Do, do you know what I was expecting to see? So that noise we just heard, I thought something has like <laughs> just <laughs> gone because that sounded real bad and it, and it was just continuous, right? Um, I know what's happened down there. Yeah, I know what's happened down there. I was just, I, I had a moment there where I was freaking out. I was like, we're just blowing up a car, man. So what I expected when I leaned down here was to see oil everywhere. Have a look. Oh, we have munched that. So that, that is caught air, right? So what's happened is we've got up to speed because that front cover's not on there. Yeah. We have, um, so if I back back, we've caught some air and that cover's just basically caught itself on the road. So if you back up and then we drive home slowly, because the problem is we just got too much air. We got up to 100k and it's just, so go back. We're good, <laughs> we're good. Okay, so that's a lesson learned, isn't it? <coughs> the key is to put your skid plate back on. We so need to go put the skid, Skip plate the reason on. why I didn't put the skip plate on is because I want to make sure that when I get up to temp that the drain plug is not leaking. So if you don't drive above whatever speed you were just doing just then, yeah. so if you still want to take it for a drive, we can go that way, flip a Yui, go on the 50k road, Okay. and we're fine. Well, I think I can put, the, we go back home, put the skid plate back on, then we can go out for a drive. Yeah. <sighs> oh well, we saved ourselves 50k. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, mechanical warranty. <laughs> you reckon that would have covered us? Oh man. <laughs> How mash is can, it under? Can I just ask? <laughs> what was going through your head when that just happened? I was like, like what? I've just wrecked the car. We're just, this is blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> We're just blowing this bad boy. Oh. We're screwed. And, oh, can you imagine the call? Like, yeah. Can't pick you up from work. Mm. I'll be picking you up in a different vehicle today. <laughs> Oh my okay. goodness, don't don't drive above 50 because that is munted. <laughs> is it actually? <laughs> i got to try and get across the road now. It's pretty fuzzy. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> what do you reckon, title of the video? Massive mistake. Massive mistake. <laughs> Engine almost destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I was quite hungry for lunch too and uh, big delay now. Big delay. But, yeah. oh my goodness. I didn't think I, oh, do you know what? Because when you take that off, those two parts must separate. They, they separate. I think they interlink a little bit and, and one's holding the other up. And that's just caught enough air. Yeah. But the sound it made on this tar seal here, it's not a smooth road, so it wasn't a smooth sound. It just sounded like there was something just went. <sighs> Let's go home. Crisis averted. Oh, we just heard the noise again. We're going at 27k an hour. <laughs> oh my. Wow. Okay, we should be good. Well, at, at least, least I can pull over here. Yeah, at least we haven't lost the engine. I did say before we left, should we put the skid plate back on? Well, the thing is you can't see... For any leaks. You can't see any leaks, no. Mm. We should be right. The thing is it's probably bent back now as well. <laughs> it is. And we've lost about an inch of it. 
because it just ground itself out on the road. Has it? Yeah. Nice one. It's all right, no one will see it under there. It's a six footer. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be shopping for a new part tonight, eh? Yeah. Because you know it's there, no one else does. I wonder if it's, has it still got the holes that I can screw it back together? Look, I didn't see that far. All I saw is it wasn't oil all over the highway. <laughs> that was the sound that we heard. Make it make, it make the noise again, just, <laughs> just for the people. <laughs> no, because it might flop off and rip whatever else it's going to take with it. We're almost home, people. All right, we'll check back in the garage. How are we looking? That looks pretty good. Is there any leaks? Oh, oh, oh. Nice one. I mean, obviously what's happened is when that's got up to speed, give it a flick. As we caught speed, that just flopped, right? I reckon we should be right. Yeah. Because that should cover over the top. I think it should, hence why it's come off. But we've eaten a bit of the corner of it, right? We have. So, let's get this skid plate back on. Now we're going to go for our maiden voyage and just see how our oil sort of checks out. Yeah, because it's that oil level that we're not too sure about. So the Haynes manual that you had said 6.8 litres. And you've spoken to a couple of people who also said you need to buy 7 litres because you're going to use 6.8. We put 6 litres in there. It's telling us the oil level is okay. And full to the top. And full to the top. So I guess it's just a matter of checking. And that was the car. The car was on flat, you know. Yeah, it was. It's so. not flat now, but it was flat. So now the drive coming up. Wow, what an oil change. What an oil change. So we've just been out, got some lunch, come back. No leaks or anything, so happy with that. Um, the car's only taken about six litres of oil. Yeah, there's a litre so, spare there. That's so the, Yeah, I mean, my research says it's roughly about 6.8 litres, and so you're right, a litre short. The car is on the um, electronic dipstick there, saying that the um, oil level is full. It's right on max, so there's no concern there. I think after the car cools down, resets and we do another cycle. I think we're gonna be a few, I don't know, 500 mils sort of short. Yeah, I think it's gonna take more. We pulled out, I don't know, a little bit over six liters, I think, from the car as it was. So, it's a bit frustrating really, because you know with the old school, you know with the dipstick, you can put the dipstick down and you could get a pretty accurate reading. Here, it's sort of a bit electronically, it's a bit sort of, I don't know how accurate it is, but it's a bit disappointing that we're kind of not quite sure at the moment. But um, car drives fine, no problems there. What I would recommend is that before you go for your first drive, put your skid plate back on. Yeah, we got that back on now, so otherwise you're gonna uh, destroy the thing underneath there. It's all sorted. We didn't do any damage under there, so no, no problem there. We haven't got to the point of um, changing the oil, uh, the air filter, so I do have a Canon air filter. We've run out of time today, so we'll put that in the next video, but um, otherwise that pretty much wraps up this afternoon. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the oil change yeah. and uh, took a little something from that. So enjoyable to work on a, uh, a car again. It's been a little while since we've done anything, right? So yeah. Nice to get under there, pass you a few tools and yeah, it's have a bit of oil. Yeah. So until uh, until the next one with that air filter, we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, stay tuned. See you later.